My name is Lisa Lewis McLean. I'm the director of campus ministry at Xavier University. I've been there for 30 years now, a long time, right? And I have um, a beautiful family. I'm married to Ronald McLean Sr. I have a son, uh, Ronald Paul McLean Jr., and a daughter, Angel Marie McLean. Uh, we attend Transfig Transfiguration of Our Lord Church. And um, that's a little bit about who I am, I guess. Born and raised uh, from New Orleans, and um, my family all live here. Well, I grew up at St. Philip the Apostle Church, um, which is uh, in the Night Ward area. Well, it used to be. The church is uh, no longer there. Um, it was torn down as a part of uh, a number of churches in the Archdiocese that's no longer there. And it was a wonderful parish. Um, I have very fond memories of growing up in that church. Um, we had a community of families that came from um, that area. We had mothers, fathers, uh, aunts, uncles, um, children. Everybody participated in the church. Uh, the men helped to fix anything that was broken in the church. The women took care of cleaning the, the linen and, and um, preparing things that the priests needed, etc. The children were there helping out wherever we could. Uh, we had a youth group, uh, the CYO Spy. Uh, Sister Julie Camilla was a, a part of that. Uh, Monsignor John Chazeski was a part of that. Um, all of the seminarians, all of the black seminarians came through St. Philip the Apostle. Um, it was just a beautiful experience, truly a, a home where everybody felt welcome and comfortable. Wonderful music, wonderful preaching. Everybody was just in love with, you know, coming to church and um, experiencing what God had to offer us. I, I smile when I think about it because I was a little girl who went to church with my aunt every day. Uh, sometimes it would just be the sisters, the priest, my aunt and I, but my reward was cookies and ice cream after mass was over, so I was down for it, okay? Um, all she had to do was say, come on, Lisa, it's time to get ready, uh, get yourself together, wash up, get ready, go to church, and I was happy because I knew it was coming afterwards. Um, everything was in Latin at the time, didn't understand a whole lot, but learned to um, participate with the mass and, and um, you know, say the prayers and, and so forth. But still a wonderful experience. And I think it helped to shape me in who I am today. Um, I have a daily devotion uh, to the Blessed Sacrament. And if you know my story, or I guess I'm here to tell you my story, right? Um, I attended Xavier Prep High School uh, from St. Philip the Apostle. And then from there, I went to uh, Xavier University of Louisiana. And I look at myself as the dream of St. Catherine Drexel. I came from a poor means, uh, working parents, um, but we didn't know we were poor at the time because everybody around us was experiencing the same thing. So as a result of that, um, we just felt the love, the, the community took care of the children, uh, the mothers helped to comb hair, whether it was their children or somebody else's children, you know, it was just a beautiful um, community. And it's kind of sad today to see what's happening in our world, you know, because they don't have the same things that we have. And they have more resources, but they don't have the love and, and the commitment and the dedication um, in some places that we had at that time. Well, when I think about um, St. Catherine Drexel, um, I feel like I've truly been blessed because I had the privilege of, of being taught by um, the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament. The, I had the Sisters of the Holy Family. I had the Oblate Sisters of Providence. Um, I mean, just an array of religious who influenced my life. But when I look at um, what I've experienced with the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament, 
uh, just taking someone like me, poor child coming up, not very confident at times, um, not having some of the, the privileges that other people have, um, they instilled in us that you can do it. You know, you have everything that it takes to do it. You're a child of God. Um, be proud of who you are. Look at the rich culture that your people have and um, learn. And in learning, then you can give back. So going to Xavier University, um, I was not at the top of my class. I wasn't at the bottom of my class, somewhere in the middle. But at the same time, um, I knew I needed to, to strengthen myself in the areas where I was weak. So um, they encouraged us, they worked with us, and they taught us how to work with each other. You know? And with that, I take that um, and everything that I do, I look at all of the people who helped to shape me. You know, my mother, the mothers in the community, um, the religious that were a part of our lives, um, um, and all of that, and just embrace that and in taking that, it helped me to help others. So I started off in youth ministry. I worked at um, a local church here, St. Monica's Catholic Church. Um, I, I worked there for about five years under the direction of, it was Father John Chazeski at the time, who remembered me when I was a teenager and when he had black hair instead of um, white hair now. Uh, he'll probably get me for that, but that's all right. Um, you know, so when I think about that, I think about all of the influences that we've had and um, how it turned, made me what I am today. And I take that and I try and share that with others. It's called passing it on. You know, John Scott, the, the famous artist, um, came from our parish. His, his family was members of our parish. And he always tried to pass on whatever he had to help someone else. And that's something that was instilled in all of us. If you have a gift, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with other people. And when, when I look at that, and I look at where I am right now, uh, working at Xavier University, working with students who are coming from different backgrounds, um, it's important that we encourage them. It's important that we nurture them. It's important that we help them to understand, you can make it. You might have to struggle. You might have to take a class over. That's OK. You know, that's a part of life. We have our ups and downs. But be persistent, and you definitely can continue, and you can make it, and don't forget to help somebody else along the way. When I think about Xavier, I just think about um, two things. I think about what I can bring to Xavier, and I think about what Xavier has done for me. Okay, and, when I, and I want to reverse that, what I can um, what Xavier has given me and then what I bring to Xavier. And the reason I say that is because when I think about what Xavier has done for me, Xavier being the only black Catholic university in the Western Hemisphere, um, that says a lot. And there was no question where I would go to college because I knew um, that was my place, that was my home. That's where I would be, uh, continue to be nurtured. And as a result of that, um, looking at what Catherine Drexel stood for, you know, who she was, what she did, and why she did it, she took her means, um, a woman who was not of African descent, to help people who were, and uh, Native Americans, the two groups of people who were um, deprived of so much, she took all of her means to help educate us giving us the opportunity to do better, um, to pull ourselves up, and also to help those who are coming behind us. You know, so no one else would do that. And she did that. So I had to be a part of that legacy. And that's something that I stress with students. You know, when you do something, keep in mind, it's not just for self-gratification. You're doing something to make this a better place. You're doing something to make this more just and humane society. You know, you're doing something to bring excellence into the picture. And we're doing it because we have to pass it on. That's how we help other people. 
we have so many folks who are coming into our, our um, country, um, immigrants coming from everywhere. Our country is full of immigrants. We're immigrants, you know, but at the same time, we got here different ways. And regardless of how you got here, you still have to help others. That's what Katherine Drexel was about. That social justice piece is so important. Um, and people don't realize that. I always say when people tell me about Black Lives Matter, um, she saw this vision before most people even knew what Black Lives Matter meant. You know, she was on that page. That's what social justice is about. So when I think about um, what she has done and how she has helped, you can't but be excited about working in an environment where you can pray every day, where if you have some challenges that you're dealing with, um, there's a place that's quiet that you could go to and just meditate, where there's people who are like-minded people and who want to work together to make it better, um, where people who are coming from different faith traditions are working together on the campus um, to encourage and motivate our students to do their best. When I think about um, those things, I think about um, how important it is to help our students. Our students uh, come from all over, not just in this country, from various countries. And they're coming to learn. They're coming because we have something that's special, you know, and, and not just have something that's special, but even as students, they're learning you have to give back in the community. You have to do something to help others. Um, our college students, our, our, our um, College of Pharmacy students, they do health disparities. So they go into the community, they, they're checking people's high blood pressure, they're checking diabetes, they're trying to help them understand the illnesses that they have and what they need to do to, to take care of themselves. We have a physician's assistant program that's just starting. You know, that's something else uh, that's gonna help other individuals. Um, we have so many other programs and we are still the number one African-American um, school that gets uh, students into medical school, you know. Um, when you think about that and you think about our meager beginnings and where we are right now and where God is pushing us to go, uh, you can't help but be excited. When, when I look at the challenges, and there are a number of challenges, because like in everything else, we have challenges. Um, you go through it because God needs to make you a little stronger. So with the adversities and stuff like that, it helps you, it helps to build character. If we truly believe um, in Christianity, then we believe in diversity. And as I think about my childhood and some of the things I experienced when I was coming up, um, a lot has changed, but there's a lot that we still need to work on. There were times in which um, when I would go with my mother to church and not to our parish church, but to um, a Jesuit church on Barone, um, it was difficult because we had to wait for everybody else to go to communion before we could go to communion. And there was one particular time where um, I was skipped over. I was a child. I had just made my communion. I was excited. I was ready to receive communion. And I don't know if the priest just didn't see me because I was kind of short or if it was intentional, but it was something that I'm still talking about today. So that hurts. Um, there's times in which we ignore each other. And we ignore each other because we have differences of opinion. We ignore each other because um, politically we may be on a different page. We ignore each other for various reasons. But if we're Christians, if we're calling ourselves Christians, we need to come together. Even in our diocese, we're still dealing with a lot of racism, okay? And every year, the Archbishop is trying to get people to come together and ask, what could we do to change things? But we have to sit down and talk about it, and nobody wants to do that. 
or people want to talk about certain things. Um, and I'll give you an example. We always talk about um, pro-life, pro-life, pro-life. But guess what? Pro-life extends from pro-life to death. So we could talk about pro-life, but we can't talk about murder and what's happening with black males and black females in this country. That's a part of pro-life to me. It all works together. So when I, I think about that, it, it um, it just bothers me because there's some things we're not ready to talk about, we don't want to talk about, or we want to sweep under the rug. There's so many times in which, um, and I noticed this recently, that people are not civil anymore, you know. Um, in grocery stores and in, 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 um, in department stores and lines, uh, driving, people are not civil. People are, um, I don't know, it, it's almost like there's an underlying um, level of, of racism in the country that was at least civil, where we, we, um, we disagreed, we may not have liked the person, but we wouldn't say it, you know. What happened to the manners that we have been taught as children? And now um, people say anything. They don't care if it hurts somebody's feelings. Um, they'll do anything. They don't care if it hurts somebody's feelings. Um, and we're teaching the children that. That's the sad part for me. So I think about this song. They will know we are Christians by our love. And that helps me to put it in perspective. You gotta show you know, what, you, what you mean. You have to walk the talk. 